Okay, so our water has reached a boiling temp of about 204 degrees, and we've got a good boil inside of our brew kettle. Um, I've prepared the malt, and like anything that goes into the brew kettle, or anything that goes into your beer making process, it's been sterilized. <laughs> um, we've sterilized the spoon, uh, and anything that I do, I rinse off in hot water even after it's been sterilized, and that's been done in preparation to stir the malt in. So you remove your lid, on your pot. Remember that's hot so you want to watch out for the steam. Cut a corner off on your malt. Wait, wait. Cut the corner off thoroughly. And what I found, you keep mind this is hot, so you, you want to temper yourself. The other thing you want to do is turn your flame off. Because if your flame's hitting the bottom of your brew kettle, you're going to start um, burning the bottom of your malt. Once you get your malt warmed up, and again it's hot, you gotta have calluses on your hands. That's where a redneck working hands come in good. <laughs> you take and you get your malt distributed into your into your beer. And now we're starting to basically pitch our beer. It's we're starting our wart. We're getting that malt down in there. We're getting a good transfer of that. Purpose of putting the bag in there is it heats that malt up and it makes it easier to get in. Keep in mind this was 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, we're right at 200 degrees Fahrenheit right now. From here on out I'll keep a thermometer in this and uh, one thing I'm gonna add to my brew kettle that I don't have right now that I desperately want is they make an addition where you can get the thermometer right on the brew kettle itself. Um, currently I don't have that but it's an upgrade I definitely want. Then we get our spoon and we stir in our wort. And again, we stir, stir in our malt from our kit and start to make our wort. You want to make sure that it's thoroughly stirred up and that. The other thing you want to make sure again, no pet hair, no animal hair, try and keep your any blowing air that's in your house to a minimum. And once I get this thoroughly stirred in to where it's mixed in with the water well, we'll start our brewing process up again. So I'm going to get this stirred in and get it relit and get it up to a boil. I add the uh, basically the bittering hops into the beer. And what's happened here is that we waited about five minutes. We've let the boil get about up to 200 degrees again, and the boil has started. And it's just a matter of of adding your hops in. Um, and you want to keep in mind. Yeah, let's take one of those hops and look at it. Or not. We'll look at one of the hops again when we do uh, flavoring hops. These are a hops pellet. Basically, it's a ground hops that's been down. It's two ounces. And if I'm correct from the kit that I'm looking at, it's a Kent Golding uh, as the bittering hops, which is a common hops that's used in most of the beers. Right at the initial phase, when you first put your, first put your malt in, is when it's most critical. That's when you really got to watch for the boil over. So right when you put that in, you want to make sure as you're increasing your heat that you're watching your uh, pot so it doesn't boil over. Once the boil becomes consistent and you have a good consistent boil in there, um, you pretty much don't have to worry about a boil over and you can let it go. We will go in the process of uh, cooking this of wort for approximately an hour now. So we'll come back to you when we do the next flavoring process. And okay, so we've had our hour boil. Uh, typically in a lot of beers you'll add your hops in about five minutes before the end of the boil. This is what a pelleted hops looks like. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to add it in per the directions that we have. The particular beer we're making today, you add it in and you add your honey pouch in and then we go to the cooling process. Basically the cooling process is a series of coils like this that sits in the in the wart and cools it down. Your ideal temperature is about 85 degrees and so we're going to shoot for cooling this wart down to an 85 degree level uh, per the directions. I'm going to go ahead and, and add my honey for my honey cream ale. That'll flavor this beer up and add a lot of sugar. Um, right now the wort is in a stable stage, but as you cool the wort down, as you cool the wort, um, it becomes very, very, very important that you keep your breath, uh, any bacteria, substances, anything that could cause a bacteria for your wort you need to keep out of it. Um, it's at over 200 degrees right now. We don't have a lot of risk of bacteria, but as it cools down, we could do that. So imparting our breath or anything like that when we transfer it to our fermenter could potentially 
um, taint your beer because again we'd be adding uh, foreign materials into it. So I'm going to add my honey. We're going to let it set and cool. It takes about 45 minutes with the coils. Uh, otherwise we'd be looking at a six hour process for this to cool down to the 85 degree temperature. So we're going to excite that up and, and, and uh, speed that process up with the uh, cooling tubes. So we'll be back with you as soon as we get it cooled and then we're going to go for transferring the wort into the prime or into the fermenting tank and basically adding the yeast and starting we've cooled the uh, wort down and I'm guessing we're somewhere it's saying in the 50s but by the time it mixes well we should be at the 80 degree temperature mark. This is the most critical phase of the wort. This is when the wort is most susceptible to uh, bacteria or any type of contamination. So it's good not to breathe on it or have any type of breath on it when you transfer it over. Again, make sure there's no air flow moving around or anything. And basically you take your fermenting tank, open your valve up, and transfer your wort. You just transfer your wort in after that. So we'll transfer this in and then we'll add the yeast. Okay, we've transferred the wort over to the fermenting tank. And one of the things that I went ahead and did is I bought a liquid crystal thermometer and basically it's so I can tell where I'm uh, having my ferment at. You want to have it between 65, uh, 68 degrees ideally. Sometimes in my environment it will slip up to 70, but for the most part it stays uh, right around 68 degrees, which has seemed to be really good. If I can get it a little colder, even better. It makes the ferment process uh, go a little longer. The big key important factor here is you do not want to put your activated yeast in if it's over 85 degrees. So what we'll do, we're just going to clip our yeast. It doesn't stink too bad. Clip that off there. We're going to add that to the ferment, being careful not to add the bladder that was in there. Again, you want to be very careful not to impart any breath or introduce any bacteria into that mix because it's, it's a sterile formula at this point in time. And now it's just a matter of making the magic happen. As the package says, we've added a billion yeast cells designated to... Uh, directly inoculate five gallons of wort and that's exactly what it's going to do. And what we're going to see in a couple days is we're going to see a nice foam rise up here on the rim and that'll tell me that the uh, that the ferment has started and we've got a good ferment. Usually if you can get it to go up here an uh, inch and a half, two inches or whatever, you've had a very good ferment started. Um, one last thing we'll want to do is we'll want to take a hydrometer reading of this beer and I won't take it out of my fermenting tank, I'll go ahead and take it out of my brew kettle I'll just fill a little bit in and uh, we'll go to that step next. All right, as I stated earlier, we were going to do a hydrometer test. This is our finished wart that we took out of there. And we'll let the hydrometer settle and uh, check out and see what it is. Sometimes you got to spin it a little bit to get the bubbles off of it. This is a very important number to write down. You want to make sure you record that in your brew Bible uh, and so you can get your accurate reading. This is misted up a little bit because of the heat. I think we're going to be about 1.04. 1.042 is our finishing gravity, or our gravity as it's finished. Another thing I like to do, and this is kind of the beer maker's piece de resistance, or however you want to call it. This is uh, the best thing to do. Sample your beer before you put it away, and you're going to get an idea of what a good beer is going to be when it's finished out. Uh, right now, keep in mind, there's no carbonation in it. It is a little warm. It's kind of flat tasting. This one here is going to be very hoppy with a very, uh, you can really taste the honey in it. Uh, you can really, the, the bitterness and the flavor of the hops has been transferred to the beer. And what I've typically found is when it, you get that heavy bitterness uh, of the hops in your initial taste, after their process of fermenting, Car and lagering, and then uh, uh, for me, or getting the carbonation in it, and it sits in the refrigerator for about four days. It's pretty good. You'll end up with a finished product that looks similar to this. This is a beer I brewed about a month ago. It still has really good carbonation, a good head, nice clear color balance, and the best part of brewing beer is the end result. Nothing like a good glass of beer. Enjoy, and I hope this has helped you out.